Jesus, when he was here on earth in his Galilean ministry, essentially did three things. He preached, he taught, and he healed. And Jesus continues through his church to engage in that threefold ministry of teaching, preaching, and healing. As I've come to recognize and to know that it's his ministry, this healing ministry that I'm called to, that means that wherever I go, he's already there. I believe God is sort of giving back the healing ministry of Jesus to the church today, just to think that he wants us to partner with him. That's good news, isn't it? Really, uh, some questions that I have for you that I think you, you've shared some of these things in different different areas, but I think it would be great for us to just, just linger in them tonight. Um, and I guess the first one to really kind of take us in is uh, what distinguishes your understanding of healing ministry? We're, we're all coming in with from, you know, we have all sorts of different backgrounds and teachings and things we've heard. We've had a lot of connection within our new room relationships and experiences and, and church worlds. But what distinguishes your understanding of healing ministry from other popular approaches? And why do you believe God's people are ripe for this invitation now more than ever? Thanks, Dan. Well, if you look out there on the horizon, most of the healing ministry and the emphasis on healing in the church today is being done by uh, Pentecostals and Charismatics. Mm -hmm. uh, and over the last really uh, 125 years, they're the ones that have mm -hmm. really made this a priority and a focus, uh, along with an emphasis on the Holy, on the Holy Spirit. And it's really interesting in uh, uh, global Pentecostalism today, uh, I quote uh, a statistic at one point in the book where uh, the author of a book of essays on global Pentecostalism says that uh, in Latin America, in Africa, and Asia today, uh, uh, when they survey Pentecostals and Charismatics, they find that about uh, 80 to 90 percent of them uh, talk about healing as being an essential part of their conversion experience to Christ that they experienced a divine healing in some manner. And that was what, you know, led them to Christ or brought them to Christ. So there's a strong emphasis there on, on healing. But uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the Charismatics and the Pentecostals, they've emphasized healing and, and, and the spirit, but they haven't been as biblically grounded sometimes mm. as they've needed to be. They've had a lot of zeal but not as much knowledge sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, you've got uh, what I call more word-centered, Bible-centered, Orthodox Christians, Evangelical Christians. Uh, really, that was the kind of tradition that I grew up in more. Um, and uh, even though we say we believe in divine healing, for mm -hmm. all practical purposes, uh, we function like cessationists, hmm. oh, which is a word to describe people who basically have said that he, the, the, the gifts of healing and healing miracles stopped hmm. after the age of the apostles or after about the first three centuries. Hmm. And uh, so they, one group sort of overbelieves in healing, the other group underbelieves in it. And hmm. I'm trying actually in this book to sort of chart a middle way. Yeah. a middle way uh, uh, where we both emphasize word and spirit, mm. word and spirit. And I'm finding out there that there are a lot of charismatics and Pentecostals that are hungry for a more balanced, uh, holistic approach to healing because yeah. they've seen uh, you, you, the, the dangers and the problems with excesses on one end. Mm. And then I'm finding, on the other hand, evangelical Christians and Orthodox Christians who really haven't emphasized healing very much. 
Hmm. Given the need for healing in people's lives today, yeah, uh, they're hungry for a greater emphasis on healing. Yeah. Uh, and they're just looking for someone to kind of show them a way uh, yeah. that takes the Bible seriously hmm. and takes healing seriously. So I'm hoping that this book can actually be a kind of a middle way hmm. uh, between those two paths. And I do believe that um, everyone is hungry, I think, yeah. for an emphasis on healing today. Yeah. But they want to get it right. And I I feel like we're at a time in the body of Christ mm. where we're we're ready for something in the middle. Yeah. Uh, not on one side, one extreme or the other. So I've written this book intentionally to try to be in the middle, which I think for those of us in the Wesleyan tradition, that's kind of where we often find ourselves on a lot of these issues. Mm. So that's kind of what I've tried to do here, Dan. That's so good, Steve. You know, the 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 thought that i'm having is is you referenced i think it was in an article um something jd has said that the church is really to be the primary healing agency in the world and and i felt like um that exploration you just shared even helps this become accessible to many different streams that ha maybe would step back from another approach or another book or another voice and would lean in because they hear a sense of representation, accessibility across the way to all of us playing, uh, kind of a unified voice in it, which is what I love about it. Yeah, yeah. so good. Well, let's let's kind of uh, progress then into um, an idea I'd really love us to spend some time on tonight, if we could. And it's this one area in Follow the Healer where uh, you... Uh, take a section to describe the five ways that Jesus heals. And um, I'd love if you kind of touched on those and explained how you came to this understanding and, and how does this meet the challenges of our time. Uh, and I'd like to spend a little bit of, of extra time in this one and just let's just take some time and talk about it because this is, this is, uh, you know, <laughs> This is riding the ship. They say an airplane is off course. I think it's it's ninety to ninety eight percent of the time, right? It's, <laughs> the goal is trajectory, and uh, I feel like this language you've given to it creates a better trajectory from all the the crosswinds that that hit us related to healing. So, yeah, go for it. Well, um, I was introduced uh, to what he called the five miracles mm. of healing by by Dr. Frank Stanger back in the 1970s when I was a, mm. a student at Asbury Seminary. He was the president of the seminary. And I'm not sure if he was the one that originated this. I think he might have actually got a, got it from E. Stanley Jones a little bit or borrowed it and, mm. and, and shaped it a bit. But anyway, um, uh, I found it just so helpful in kind of giving me a framework for thinking mm. about healing ministry most people, when they think about healing ministry, think about the first way that Jesus heals, uh, which is, of course, directly and supernaturally. Yeah. Uh, we, we think of physical healings. Uh, and we think of Jesus' own healing ministry in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. Most of those healing uh, miracles kind of reflect that uh, approach to healing. And praise God for uh, mm -hmm. the supernatural touch, for the yeah. way that Jesus can heal supernaturally in people's lives mm. uh, and i was talking to someone earlier today about a supernatural healing they mm. shared with me from their life and and i believe we should uh, we westerners tend to be skeptical mm. about supernatural healing yeah. they sure aren't in asia africa and latin america mm. but uh, uh this is one of the ways jesus heals and i believe that uh in our local churches, we need to create spaces where we pray for people and we, we equip yeah. people to pray for people to experience supernatural kinds of healing. Yeah. But then uh, secondly, Jesus heals through doctors and medicine. Hmm. Um, and uh, there's the miracle of modern medicine that hmm. we are so grateful for and thankful for. And really throughout the Christian tradition for 2,000 years, uh, Christians have, have been at the forefront of 
of advocating the work of doctors and medicine. Yeah. And, you know, um, in the 19th century, when missionaries went out uh, f from uh, America and Britain mm. and other places, uh, they generally started out building a church, then they built a school, then they built a hospital. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for many of these places, this was their first experience of modern medicine, you know, mm. uh, so the the importance of Jesus healing through doctors and medicine, which ought to lead us to uh, pray for our doctors yeah. and our nurses and our health care givers and, and to ask Jesus to help them help us. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think we need to do a better job of uh, setting of of affirming folks that are called to these kinds of ministries yeah. in our churches yeah. and um, uh, to to actually to lay hands on them and mm. to equip them and to and to say you're in the ministry of Je of the healing ministry of Jesus mm. uh, in what you're doing. So yeah. Jesus heals through doctors and medicine. Jesus then also heals through the human body's healing power. Mm. Uh, yeah. Your body is a healing machine. You know, mm. uh, I was talking to someone just the other day, and they were talking about how uh, the brain itself, all the research they've done, uh, actually wants to heal trauma mm. and heal the trauma that's uh, within it that's been created by uh, certain kinds of experiences and so forth. And of course, we know what a great immune system we've got. Yeah. Uh, and we know that our blood coagulates when we, we, you know, there's just this, there's this propensity toward healing within the human body mm. and that's a way that jesus who is the 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 one through whom all things were created mm. is the creator of not he's also mm. he's the lord of both creation and new creation mm. Mm -hmm. and so he wants to heal through the human body's healing power mm. and this of course leads to an emphasis on holistic medicine mm. and holistic healing which means that um you need to be careful about what you put into your body right? in terms of what you eat and the way you take care of your body in terms of exercise and rest and, mm. uh, and, and the, and things like social engagement and uh, re re recreation mm. and even things like humor help the, help the human body. And there's, there's scientific yeah. data on all of this. Yeah. Uh, so we need uh, we need to think about the the, the human body mm -hmm. and its capacity to heal as another way that Jesus heals. Uh, sometimes in healing ministry, I find that what I try to do is get rid of things sometimes that are blocking the body's ability to to heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I've uh, I've had occasion where people have uh, forgiven somebody that they've held a grudge against and they had a physical problem, maybe some uh, arthritis or some, some intestinal issues and whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, the physical problem after they forgave somebody, we didn't even pray for the physical problem, but it went away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's made me think, I think the body could do what it, it was designed to do when they got rid of that thing that was blocking and preventing it from being what mm. it was designed to do. So that's the mm -hmm. third way Jesus heals. And then Jesus heals through uh, bestowing grace mm. in suffering. Uh, uh, Dr. Stanger called this uh, the miracle of sufficient grace. Mm. You remember Paul's thorn in the flesh in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He talks about how he prayed for that to be taken away. Mm. But the Lord did not see fit to take it away or remove it, but said, mm. uh, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul, mm. and my power is going to be made manifest in your weakness. Yeah. Uh, and so God used this thorn to make Paul weak, as it were, so that he could be strong. And then you remember, Paul turns around and says, so I glory, actually. Right. Yeah. I boast in this infirmity. Hmm. I praise God for it. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I've been around folks 
who have been given incredible grace to endure and to persevere in suffering. And I've, as a pastor, I visited parishioners mm -hmm. uh, who, well, when I went in the room where they were, as they suffered with some disease, sometimes cancer, it was like the glory of the Lord mm -hmm. was present there. Yeah, it was a real miracle, and 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 in some occasions had a profound effect on people who they in their family they were touched by that they knew that god was doing something profound so that's another way i believe that that jesus brings healing yeah. through sufficient grace and then uh, mm -hmm. the last way that jesus brings healing is uh, uh through victorious dying mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. for the christian yeah death uh, it's 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 an enemy, and yet mm. its sting has been removed. Mm. Its sting has been revo removed, and even though we grieve, mm. and uh, we don't, you know, we don't live in a Pollyanna world of unreality about death. Yeah, we 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 also know that death is not the sunset for the Christian; it's the dawn. Yeah, and it's a doorway. Mm. into the presence of jesus yeah and so it's actually a for another form of healing mm. and there's a, a victorious way of dying where the once again mm. uh even in the midst of death we see the resurrection power of christ being manifested in this mm -hmm. person who's dying yeah and that has a wonderful impact uh, it's a testimony to others mm. Um, and uh, so that's another yeah. way that Jesus heals. Mm. Now, uh, in healing ministry, the question is not if Jesus uh, wants to heal. You know, sometimes people mm. pray, "If it be, if it be Thy will, Lord, would you heal?" Yeah. I believe Jesus wants it always wants to heal. The question is, how does Jesus want to heal in this mm. particular situation, and which or maybe what combination of these? Because that's another thing. It's not yeah. just necessarily one of these five, but sometimes yeah. it's a combination, isn't it? Yeah, of, absolutely. Of, of all of these things, or several of them working together yeah. in terms of how he heals. And uh, I, I believe we should not set these over against each mm -hmm. other or exalt one uh, and make one. So, well, if you're really spiritual, this would happen to you. Uh, but if you're not, maybe you should do this, you know? No, yeah. we shouldn't see it. We should see the Lord Jesus working in all these ways mm -hmm. uh, to bring healing to broken, to the broke, to human brokenness. So uh, yeah. I found this very, very useful, I think, in terms of uh, as I approach people mm -hmm. and as I pray for people, sometimes I start, I generally start praying uh, boldly. If I don't mm -hmm. know much, I, I want to, I want to I want to believe that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's now. Yeah. Jesus can heal supernaturally. But if we pray for someone like that uh, a few times and nothing happens, we begin to start thinking, well, okay, how do we need to pray for this person? Maybe we need mm -hmm. to change the kinds of praying we're doing for mm -hmm. them in terms of healing. So I found mm -hmm. this to be a really rich and helpful away uh, and i i think if we could get a hold of this we would have a a, a really full orbed balanced and mm -hmm. wonderful approach to healing ministry yeah that's a pretty long answer dan but anyway there oh, you go i want it to be longer i have more questions yeah. here yeah. Let, let's uh let, let's stay in this a bit that, that's so good steve and i i i'm sure we're all just really encouraged by that uh the moment uh you said you know, death, death is not a sunset. It's a dawn for the Christian. Uh, recently, I've just lost two people um, very close to me from different kinds of situations. And, and I am always amazed at the, the thread of joy and hope that runs through the, the Christian's vision of, of passing into the arms of Jesus and, and really being truly alive in his presence. It's, it's delightful, you know, yeah, Paul Paul talks about, mm -hmm. I think, in 2 Corinthians, that even 
each day as our bodies are wasting away, he says our spirits are being renewed day by day. And mm. you, you just literally see that being yeah. worked out in someone's life in front of your eyes. And it's amazing. Yeah. Let's take it toward this this theme you explore, which I'm I'm really fascinated by, and it feels like it could fix. It's got a remedial kind of quality to it that it seems to be something the Lord's doing in many uh, places. This fixation on that first way of healing related to power, and you kind of you recenter us on love. And why is that so important? Because as you talk about these five ways of healing, love makes them all make sense sitting at the center. Power can be disorienting in that. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear you just talk about why are we fixated primarily on the power theme potentially, and, and how can we move forward from that or into another way of seeing it, the power of God? Well, uh, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that uh, what Jesus is trying to do and what God is trying to do in all of our lives as Christians mm -hmm. is to make us more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Paul talks about three mm -hmm. things that endure faith, hope, and love. Yeah. And so yeah. often, um, yeah. uh, you, you know, we want the Lord to exercise his power in setting us free from some phys particularly physical infirmity or some, some pain that we're experiencing. But, you know, I found the Lord oftentimes is actually, he's, he's working in our lives to bring about our transformation into the image of his son, our sanctification. And, uh, uh, and and it, yeah. he's do, he's doing that out of out of love mm. for us, and yeah. he's more you know you know he knows what's best for us mm. more than we do. Mm. Now it's I think it's a natural thing for us human beings to kind of want to be delivered. We're like like little children, you know. Mm. We operate like that, and um, and then when occasionally when we see a divine healing. Uh, we think, wow, well, then why can't that happen to me or to everyone? Right. Uh, but uh, uh, understanding, you know, that Jesus uh, heals first and fo foremost out of his love for us. Mm -hmm. And I could talk about how that's spelled out in the Gospels in yeah. different ways. Uh, that's actually really helped me because I've come to trust in his love. Mm. Even when I can't see, you know, when mm. you can't, when you can't trace his hand, you can still trust his heart, mm. as someone has said, you know. Yeah. And I know that he's, I, 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 mm. that he's working again to bring about transformation in this person's life, and he loves this person. Mm. Um, and so when I pray for people, I want to see them. Exp I want to. St I'm thinking to myself. What needs to happen that this person might experience God's love for them? Mm. Uh, yeah. Even if even if it doesn't come particularly in the way that they expect it or want it. Yeah. Because I know, because you know, if they get if they experience God's love, yeah. Uh, it, it, it it's God's love makes everything all right. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I can live, you know, I can live with whatever comes knowing. That I'm his beloved, and then that and that he, you know, uh, that he delights in me. So anyway, yeah. uh, I think it's so important to get that yeah. right, Dan. Yeah, we have to get that right, don't we? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'd love, I'd love you just to. Uh, I didn't uh, send you this ahead of time as a question, um, and not all of these did I, but uh, I just had this stir in my 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 heart. Is if if you imagined. So imagine a day in the life of the church that's really following the healer, the body of Christ following the healer. What, what does that day look like? What's happening in the church? What's happening in the boardroom or the, uh, the home, the house? What, like, what kind of day in the life could you imagine with this kind of loving, fully scoped vision of healing happening? Um, does that yeah. make sense? The question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 
It, it sort of does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 obviously, you know, Jesus did three things. He preached, he taught, he healed. Yeah. And in a way, when you think of what of the church, all three of those hmm. things are continuing through his body, the church. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, it would it would seem to me that mm. one of the things that would happen if if we mm. took if if we understand that Jesus he uh, wants to heal mm -hmm. is that we would we would create a context and an expectation mm. in our congregations that coming to Christ and receiving Him uh, for the forgiveness of sins and yeah. entering into a relationship with Him. Uh, leads to uh, mm. the the need for healing in one's life of the areas of brokenness in their life. Mm. You know, uh, my father, uh, David Siemens, wrote a famous book years ago called Healing for Damaged Emotions. Mm. Yeah. And it was almost like at that particular point, I think that book came out in 1981 or something mm. like that. Mm -hmm. And it was like the idea that uh, there could be for the Christian a healing of your emotions. Hmm. That was almost like a, a a revolutionary idea, right? I think we should help people to come to to know that that's just part of the package because Jesus hmm. Jesus wants to heal areas of brokenness in our yeah. lives. He wants to heal relationships yeah. between uh, people within the body. He also wants to heal, bring healing and reconciliation to races, mm -hmm. and 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 you know. Uh, so, mm -hmm. if if we started out that it would first of all it would it would frame it would give us this overarching understanding that that is something we expect to see, and yeah. then I think Dan it would lead to um, uh, specific practices. Yeah where we gave people opportunities to experience healing, whether mm -hmm. it's in a small group where we pray for people and yeah. not just sort of pray at the end, uh, you know, cat, but, but literally address healing needs and allow mm -hmm. people to receive healing there or, or in our worship services, uh, giving people opportunities to, to come and receive healing, mm -hmm. uh, pr healing prayer. I think that, uh, Obviously, we have uh, um, programs like Celebrate Recovery, which are really mm -hmm. a, an expression of the healing ministry of Jesus. Right. Yeah. I just yeah. use that as one example where people are experiencing healing for uh, brokenness in their lives and addictive patterns for in their lives. We should be doing those kinds of mm. things uh, regularly. Yeah. We also should be calling out people mm. from the body uh, who have uh, giftings in the area of healing. Mm. There are spiritual, certain of the spiritual gifts that are sort of naturally gravitate to healing ministry. Yeah. We should be, uh, you know, mm. and then we should be equipping those folks mm. to be able to do the ministry of healing. Yeah. Uh, and again, Healing and evangelism go hand in hand. Yeah. You know, yep. there are many people that if you try to share Jesus with them, they'll push mm. you away. But if you say, is there something I could pray with you about? So often they'll end up sharing a healing need. Right. That's and, right. you know, then mm. when you pray and they experience healing, this is what's happening in the global church in many occasions. Mm. And it's out of the healing that happens that then, then they come to Christ. So these are just some of the yeah. ideas that come to my mind that begin to, so you begin to see how this whole thing begins to uh, yep. open up, you know? Yeah. Your, 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 you know, kind of central theme is that, that this is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. In that sense, it's not ours to cling to. It's, it's Jesus ministry moving through us and we're agents of healing. If we saw our yes. work as Christians to be agents of healing in all these respects. Um, the whole tide would rise, you know, in so many ways in the body. Yeah. And, uh, and I mm. think that the culture around us mm. would sit up and take notice. Yeah. Because it doesn't take a yeah. rocket scientist to figure out that we are very, we are a very broken, needy people right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Absolutely. And I think I think they would hear hear our message gladly mm. if they could experience Jesus yep. the healer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's let's turn that uh, then toward this this question. So what's your encouragement uh, tonight to ordinary Christians? Maybe they're apprehensive or they're anxious about praying for people to receive healing or kind of moving forward in this. Uh, what will they learn from from the book and the and the on-demand course? What what kind of words would you have for for those folks? Well, uh, uh, right off the bat in the in the first chapter, I, I strongly emphasize the fact that uh, it's not about you asking Jesus to help you in your healing ministry, uh, but it's about you joining him in his ongoing ministry of healing. And uh, remember, so the first and, and foundational thing I would say is remember that you're not the healer, Jesus is. Mm. And don't take the burden of healing on yourself. Right. Uh, you know, uh, mm. you, you let, let me just tell you, when you get into this kind of ministry of praying for people, uh, you're in over your head from the get-go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's part of the reason why I think people sometimes avoid this. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. get up and read scripture if you ask me to, or I'll do this, <laughs> I can do. But, uh, you know, we're, we're in over our head, but that's yeah. okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. We're not the healers anyway. And yeah. um, uh, I, I like to say... Uh, you know, remember, too, that uh, in healing ministry, you're not in management, you're in sales. Hmm. Uh, you know? Yeah, uh, that's good. What Jesus has commanded us to do is to pray for the sick hmm. and uh, and to pray for those with healing needs. And hmm. uh, ultimately, when we pray for them, we, we really do so not because we're gifted or we actually know necessarily what Jesus mm. wants to do in every situation. Mm. Uh, there are occasions when the Lord, you know, really leads us and guides us because, because he really wants to heal them. Yeah. And he, he gives us insight and sometimes words of knowledge and, and uh, ability to pray, but all in all, uh, it's so important to understand that it's his ministry, not ours and that we join him. And that takes the, you might, you might just say that takes the burden off of us. Hmm. And it also, it also tells you, tells me what my main, the main thing he, he calls me to do is to hmm. abide in him. Right. And to, and to deepen my own relationship hmm. with him hmm. so that when I'm in the moment or in a situation with someone uh, praying for them or listening to them, that he can that that he can flow through me and work through mm. me, uh, but I would say I would definitely underscore that Dan. Mm. Uh, remember so that good. you're not the healer, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, there's our takeaway. There's our takeaway yeah. tonight for that. Well, let's let's do one last question here, and uh, then I'm just going to note uh, note the the book and the course for for all those who are watching the video of this. Um, the, uh, this final question is really kind of turned toward awakening. Uh, you know, our work at Seedbed is focused on awakening and, you know, to gather resource, connect uh, the people of God to sow for a great awakening. And, uh, what would happen in our hearts, in our homes, our churches and our cities, if God's people were to take this message, uh, to heart and become open to participating in the healing ministry of Jesus? Uh, well, Dan, there's a there's a wonderful Old Testament prophecy concerning mm -hmm. the coming Messiah in mm -hmm. in the in the book of Malachi. Actually, the the last chapter of the of the last book mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. Malachi chapter four, uh, that says this. Um, but but for you who fear my name, mm -hmm. the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And you will go free, leaping with joy like calves let out to pasture. On the day when I act, you will tread upon the wicked as if they were mm. dust under your feet, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> That's quite a, wow. a, a word there. 
And actually, uh, those of you that know uh, Charles Wesley's great hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, mm. know how he picks that up in one of the verses, you know, hail the heaven-born prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. And that's a really an allusion to that prophecy in mm. the book of Malachi. Well, I believe if this, uh, if the message of follow the healer is taken to heart, that we will come closer to the ultimate fulfillment of that prophecy. Mm. That Jesus, the Messiah, the son of righteousness, mm. will surely begin to rise as never mm. before with healing in his wings. Mm. That's what the prophecy says. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. We'll, we will see the, the fulfillment of that, mm. that the body of Christ will see the fulfillment of that as mm. never before, as, as we move toward the return of the Lord. Mm. And, and then as a result, the, the, the prophecy says that uh, two things will come to pass. It says mm. we ourselves and those in our homes and churches and cities get this now, will go free, leaping with joy like calves let out to pasture. Yeah. You get the picture in your eye, the, yeah. the calves that have been cooped up all winter yeah. in the barn. All of a sudden, the springtime comes and we let them out and the, they get out and they kick around and they, you know, the joy that comes when the Lord heals mm. is, is uh, freedom that comes to people and joy and experiencing who they were designed to be as human beings, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, and then it, it says, finally, God's people will tread upon the forces of wickedness and evil as if they were dust under our feet. Hmm. You know, uh, we, uh, Satan, the thief comes to steal and to destroy yeah. and, 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 and to tear down and, you know, and to just, well, to just to keep us from being who God intended. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as we, as people are receiving healing, uh, actually, that's one of the ways, I guess, mm -hmm. that we do spiritual warfare. Yeah. That we win the battle against evil yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. On the day when I act, it says you will tread upon the wicked mm. as if they were dust under your feet. Mm. And I say all God's people can say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah.